what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so last week I made a video about some of the schools that I failed since I've been in special operations well today I wanted to do something a tad bit different I wanted to make a video about uh, some of the best army schools that I've been to that's helped me throughout my career now when I say best army schools I'm not talking about best special operations schools. Special operations schools being the schools that are within special operation, like your Sephardic, your Sniper, your Halo, your Scuba, all the sexy schools. I'm not talking about those, right? Because as special forces operators, we're expected to go to those schools and pass. I'm talking about some of the big army conventional schools that we as special forces operators have access to, but we rarely go to them. Now, I was lucky because I was in Big Army for five years prior to going special operations. So I wanted to share some of those Big Army schools with you that I've had a chance to go to while I was in Big Army and some while I was in uh, special operations that's not only helped my career, but helped my team and also my unit. With all that said, guys, I'm hoping to just spark this conversations and let the comment section do the rest of the work if you're a special forces operator and you've been to some big army schools that you think can be beneficial to the audience please share them in the comment section below guys with all that said let's kick this off with the very first school so the very first school is umo unit movement officer now this one is a air force base school mainly because the school revolves around packaging and shipping materials to include your equipment, your ammunition, and other type of hazards that we need to do work downrange. This is typically how this works. A special forces team gets word that they're deploying downrange. Now you gotta keep in mind, a special forces team is set up to be, to be self-sufficient, right? So we're responsible for packaging our equipment on a pallet, getting it ready for inspection the air force then comes down inspect it make sure it's safe to fly and then we fly to whatever country that we're deploying to well as the 18 charlie on the team it was my job to ensure that all the hazards and all the equipment were more correctly to pass air force inspection so it can fly so the air force has this course called unit movement officers where they will teach units how to properly pack their equipment to be shipped on their aircraft. Now, the one I went to was here at Fort Bragg and it was approximately two weeks long. Now, without having a unit movement officer part of your team, you are at the mercy of whatever big army installation that you are on. Meaning, in order to ship your equipment, you have to go find a unit movement officer qualified individual that's gonna come and take care of all your equipment, especially if you have a hazmat. So what I did to negate that, guys, as the 18 Charlie, I just went to that course and got certified. And then whenever it was time for my team to fly, I was always available to make sure that our equipment was good. I did the same thing when I had my team. Both of my 18 Charlies were UMO qualified. So whenever it's time for us to move, we're not limited by not having the right individuals. So that's the number one school I would recommend to any special forces operators out there is unit movement officer. Typically that role is the 18 Charlie, but anybody can go to it because anybody could conduct that job. Now moving on to the second school guys, this one's gonna be EOCA, that is Explosive Ordnance Clearing Agent. Now this school is the combat engineer's watered down version of an EOD guy. And as a special forces engineer sergeant, on the Special Forces ODA, my job was to clear IEDs if we didn't have an EOD attached. Having gone to that school just helped me be able to do that job a little bit better. Yes, we get two weeks of UXO in the 18 Charlie course, but going to EOCA further enhanced those skills. It made me a better, I guess, bum tech in a way, right? So uh, that, that course, last I checked, was five weeks long and it's out of Fort Leonard, Missouri. Again, this job doesn't have to be just for the 18 Charlie. Anybody on the team can attend this school because let's say you're downrange doing work and you don't have a Charlie. That's not uncommon. You don't have a Charlie on the team and somebody has to pick up that slack. It would be nice to have somebody that knows what the heck they're doing out there clearing those IEDs. 
And if you do have a Charlie, now he has somebody else that can help him whenever he's performing that dangerous task. So yes, guys, EOCA out of Fort Leonard, Missouri is another one that I would highly, highly recommend. Now, these other three schools, guys, I haven't been to them, but I've spoken to some of my teammates that have, and they said there's a lot of benefits to them, right? The first one being the armor course, especially if you're on 18 Bravo, you can easily go down and get trained up as an armor to be able to work on whatever type of weapon system that the army has, right? That course is approximately two weeks long. Last time I checked, if it's changed, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Uh, but that one, from what I understand from my Bravos that I've spoken to, is a great course to go to and it sets you up for if you ever had to get out um, and not retire from the military, right? You have that skill, you have that piece of paper that says that you are a trained armor and you can find work working as a gunsmith uh, anywhere in the United States. Moving on to number four, guys, and this one's going to be Battle Staff. Now, I know this one's not a popular one within the community, but the material that this course train you will make you a better Special Forces operator, especially when you're downrange working with a partner force, i.e. commandos or ALP or any other uh, uh, folks that are doing operations to where you have to be back at the top and you're tracking these individuals movement throughout the battlefield as a junior you know e6 type you might find yourself in that role it would be good if you knew what the heck you were doing uh when you're serving in the role of a operation sergeant so this school will get you started so if you have a chance i recommend you go to it it's approximately two weeks long last time i checked guys last but not least guys is the master resilient trainer now i've heard a lot of good things about this course i never had a chance to go however it revolves around physical and mental readiness of the force to make sure that everyone's ready and is in the best condition to perform their jobs all right guys those are the five courses like I said two of them I've been to the other three I have not however I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say as far as the best army schools to go to let me know in the comment section below guys hopefully one of you guys gets something out of this video I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next one